You're listening to the Law of Attraction Radio Network. The secret to well-being is discovering the power that is your birthright, the power to create a happier, healthier life drawn from our own vast internal resources. Join Jules and her guests as they gently guide you to shift your perspective from the familiar negative to the divinely connected, a place that will not only positively impact your world, but possibly shift the planet. It's all right here on Law of Attraction Talk Radio. Well, welcome to Law of Attraction Talk Radio. I'm Jules from beautiful Southern California, and I'm so glad you could be with me. Happy New Year's! That's right, it's now 2018, and I'm so excited because it's going to be a phenomenal year. You know, the year 2018 is a number two year. This means that it's all about relationships. Past relationships, present relationships, love relationships, sibling relationships, business relationships, clients. It's about learning how you can actually um, interact much better with those around you in your environment. For me, it's especially important because I want to communicate better with my listening audience. So, it's definitely a number two year. This is what we are all supposed to be concentrating on during the two year. Now, Roscoe has told us, if you remember, he was on the show a couple of weeks ago. He told us that we are simply looking at others because we're one with them. They are reflecting back to us our own emotions. This is very important. They're not triggering us, we're triggering us. And we've got to understand that what they say to us that makes us so upset is, in fact, how we are attracting our own emotions back to us. It's not the other person's fault. In other words, we're simply hearing what our own emotions are telling us. So it's time that we stand up and pay attention to what really irks us, really gets us mad, and it's a good chance to really learn where we are vibrationally and what emotions are blocking us. It's very, very exciting. A whole new world is opening up for us. And that brings me to a wonderful, wonderful show to start the new year off right. We have got none other than Michael Lozier. Now, Michael Lozier is the only law of attraction person that Oprah Winfrey endorsed. As a matter of fact, his book, Law of Attraction, is the only book that she's endorsed for the Law of Attraction. This is pretty phenomenal. He sold two million copies. So you need to stand up and pay attention here. It's phenomenal. Things that we have got wrong. And he's straightening us out. It's going to be a great show, one in which you are going to learn a lot. And um, I am so delighted. I can call this man my friend. He is just fantastic. And you will learn ways where you can get the book, where you can even find out more about Michael Lozier. So with that, let's take a fast commercial break and we'll be right back with none other than the wonderful, exciting law of attraction expert and master trainer, Michael Lozier. We'll be right back. It's here. It's hot. And it's a must read. It's the science behind The Law of Attraction magazine. 
Every issue brings you great articles and in-depth how-tos from all your favorite law of attraction experts, authors, scientists, and medical professionals. Go to lawofattractionmagazine.net. That's lawofattractionmagazine.net. Well, welcome, Michael, to Law of Attraction Talk Radio. I'm so glad to see you again, my friend. Oh, well, I'm glad to be here, and I'm excited because 2018 will be the year that people are going to make changes because of what we are going to talk about today. So I'm excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Oh, uh, my pleasure. I When we met down in Palm Springs, had a delightful lunch. Oh, my goodness. I just... I just new we're like a match you know it's just so great and I'm so honored and you really really know your stuff and I want to make sure everybody knows about this book called law of attraction this is the best book this is the book that Oprah Winfrey Winfrey recommends too yeah and that's why he has sold over two million books in how many languages? Uh, 37. 37 Holy cow. languages. <laughs> so it, it is fantastic. So we're going to be talking about some of the questions I have are, is in this book. So we're going to be covering a whole slew of things, but especially for the year 2018. So Michael, just let's, let's go. Let's start. What do you recommend? Right. Well, first, let's talk first. Uh, I, what I'd like to do is get everybody up to speed. I know that they know that I know that we know what law of attraction is, but let's just do a little two or three minute training session here. So people might be sharing it with other people because my hunch is they're going to be excited about what they're going to learn today. Well, although that uh, we, uh, the word law of attraction might be new to some of your friends, the expressions aren't like we use the word, hey, what a coincidence or serendipitous or synchronicity or fate or karma. When we use those words, we're describing evidence of law of attraction. So my point is we're already experiencing it. Even if you've never used the word law of attraction, whenever you said, wow, this is such a coincidence. This is so synchronistic. This is so serendipitous. Those words are used to describe law of attraction. Check. Why I'm telling you that is because we're already experiencing it. You don't have to turn anything on. It's already on. What we do need to do is be more deliberate about what we're attracting. You see, Law of Attraction has a two-word job description. You know, um, Jules, when I worked for the government, I had a 17-page job description. It went on forever. Your duties include this and this and this. But the job description for Law of Attraction is easy. It's only two words long, match vibrations. You see, with all due respect, Law of Attraction isn't very smart, but it is very obedient. And it's eavesdropping on your vibes. And your vibes are simply your mood or your feeling. You know, sometimes you'll say, oh, wow, the vibe's ever good in here. What we mean is the vibes are positive. Or we might say, he's giving off a negative vibe, which means he's giving off a negative feeling. So the word vibe is simply a mood or a feeling, and the word vibe really comes from the longer word, vibration. So I'm demystifying the word vibration. Oh, what does that mean? Well, you have one right now. A vibration is simply a vibe, and a vibe is simply a mood or a feeling. And right now, and right now, and right now, everybody has one. You cannot ha not have a vibe right now. And there's only two kinds, negative vibes and positive vibes. We're not judging them. They're just the two kinds of vibes. You see, whenever you're feeling ticked off and angry and disappointed and guilt and shame and blame, you are putting off a negative vibe without doing anything on purpose. And when you're feeling love and joy and appreciation and gratitude, you're sending a positive vibration without doing anything. So without doing anything, you and I right now are emitting or putting off or sending a vibe. And there's only two kinds, positive and negative. So why do you need to know about that? Well, it's called Law of Attraction, and it's in the room. It's in your office. It's in your car. It's in your workplace. It's in your bedroom. It's everywhere. It is this energy that I can't prove. 
Wouldn't it make it easier, Jules, if I could pass it around a test tube and say, hey, this is law of attraction. Do you believe me now? But I can't do that. But what I can do today is to give people some tools that they can practice and they will say this. Wow, what a coincidence. Something came to me out of the blue. This is fate or this is karma. And instead of using the word law of attraction, they'll use the words that describe evidence of law of attraction. So in short, law of attraction is universal energy right now. It's responding to the vibe that you're having, whether it's negative or positive. Remember earlier, I respectfully said law of attraction isn't very smart. It doesn't know that that vibe is something that you want or don't want, or whether it's healthy or not healthy, or whether it's good or bad for you. It is unfolding and orchestrating to bring you more of the vibe that you're sending. So we need to be more deliberate about the vibe that we're sending. Because law of attraction doesn't know whether it's good or bad. It's just matching it. So if you're listening, you're thinking, well, I wonder what the vibe is that I'm sending. Well, I can tell you from here. If you're curious and you want to know what the vibe is that you're sending in any area of your life, go to that area and take a look and see what you're getting. It's a perfect match. You want to know the vibe you're sending about money? Open your wallet. Yeah, You want to know the vibe you're sending about attracting clients or customers? Open your client and customer file folders. And if you want to know the vibe that you're sending about attracting your ideal boyfriend or girlfriend, how's that working for you? You know, I didn't create the rule, I'm just teaching it. Because if it was my rule, it would be only attract positive things. That would be Michael Loche's definition, but that's not the law. That's why it's called a law. It's a rule. You attract the vibration that you're sending. So today, I'm going to be teaching you how to be a deliberate sender. You know, because law of attraction is already working. Remember earlier I said it's on. It's on right now. You don't even have to tap into it. So I'm going to teach you what you need to be doing deliberately so you can be using law of attraction deliberately, which makes you a deliberate attractor. Because right now we're, de we're attracting by default. We're attracting to whatever we're giving our attention, energy, and focus to. So for 2018, I want to set you up so you're deliberately attracting with deliberate attraction. Now, the first thing I want to do is, you know, there's a lot of goal setting going on, right? And a lot of people are using SMART goals. Well, I don't like them. You know why? Because in most cases, they don't work. So if you're a goal setter, here's what happens. Well, first, setting the goal is important, right? Because when we set the goal, it sets the energy in motion. It's like, okay, I'd like 10 new clients this, this, this in the first quarter. Boom, I just set the energy in motion. Say, oh, I'd like to attract a boyfriend or girlfriend. Boy, I just set the energy in motion. I'd like to attract a job interview. Boy, I just set the energy in motion. So goal setting is important because it causes us to decide what we want because you don't, you don't set a goal of what you don't want, right? Setting the goal makes you say, well, what do I want? I have to get clear about it. So that's the good part. But here's where we get tripped up with goal setting. Say you wanted 10 clients in the first quarter and you only got four. You know what we're doing? We're keeping score that we're not there yet. And law of attraction is eavesdropping. So for our podcast listeners, I'm holding up a picture of a guy with a bubble around him. In my book, I call him, this is the vibrational bubble. And law of attraction is eavesdropping. Imagine a bunch of hula hoops around us. Law of attraction is checking inside this bubble to find out the vibration that I'm sending. And when it finds it, it's responding to it. So, boy, I just set my goal. Ten new clients this month. Boy, I'm all excited. Law of Attraction is checking inside my bubble. It's responding to the desire for me to have new clients. And now I'm thinking, well, I only got four, and there's only two more, two more weeks left, and I want it ten. So now the vibration that I'm sending is I'm not getting the ten that I wanted. You see, with goal setting, we start to keep score that we're not there yet. Matter of fact, you know when we celebrate with goal setting? Yeah. When we reach the goal. We don't celebrate until, so guess what? You never get excited until you reach the goal. So I want to encourage people, I know it's a paradigm shift, to get rid of goal setting the traditional way. Where you set a number and you set a date and now you're watching the clock. I got two more weeks left and I don't have all the clients that I want. I've got three more weeks left. Remember, 
if you're giving it attention, it is inside your bubble. So here's the law of attraction way. Say you got four clients and you wanted 10. Now build the list and call the list. Here's what I like about the clients I just attracted. Now remember, this game is called the inclusion game. It's helping you include the vibration of your ideal client within your bubble. And law of attraction doesn't know whether you have four of them or five of them or the 10 of them. It's responding. So I might say this. Well, out of the four clients, here's what I like about them. They signed up for my services right away. I like that. And they all paid me in time. I like that. Boy, we had positive conversations. I like that. Matter of fact, one of them recommended me on her Facebook page. I like that. So you hear the story that I'm telling myself? That story is causing me to send the vibration of my ideal client. And Law of Attraction is eavesdropping. And here's the trick. This is like the hack. Law of Attraction doesn't know how that vibration got inside my bubble. It's only responding to it. So Law of Attraction doesn't know from pretending, daydreaming, remembering, or complaining, or worrying, or talking about what I do want, or talking about what I don't want. So we need to be very deliberate about what we're including in your bubble. And Law of Attraction doesn't care if you say it out loud, or write it down, or make a collage, or tell 10 friends. It's responding to how you feel about what you give your attention to. So the first step in goal setting is keep score of what you've attracted. And if it's only one client out of 10, Celebrate the you-know-what out of that one client and tell yourself, wow, did I ever like that one client? They paid on time. They were a good communicator. They made a decision quickly. They kept their appointments. They, in fact, they showed up early for the meeting, and they were enthusiastic. They sent me a thank you. Boy, I love when that happens. And your mind might say, yeah, but you only have one. Yeah, but the one I have is all these things. Are you understanding what I'm doing here? I'm celebrating the closeness of my match. And by closeness means by how close my match is to my ideal client. And Law of Attraction doesn't know how or why I'm celebrating it. It's just eavesdropping and matching it. So as you're celebrating the closeness of your one client, you're sending the vibration. Guess what? You get another one. And now you're on a roll. It's called the vibrational roll. So, wow, I just got another one. I, well, you know what? Play the game again. Here's the 10 things I like about the two clients I attracted. And write it down. Law of Attraction doesn't, doesn't read it, by the way. It's responding to how you feel about when you write it. Call 10 friends and say, hey, I just got two excellent clients. They're this and this and this and this. Law of Attraction isn't listening to the conversation that you're having. It's responding to how you feel about the conversation that you're having. So that's why it's called deliberate attraction. You can deliberately attract more of what you want if you're deliberately including the vibration of what you desire. And the best way to do that is to notice the proof. And when you notice the proof that you're attracting part or all of your ideal clients, you just got rid of the doubt. I'm gonna say that again. When you start to notice that you are attracting something that's in alignment to your goal, when you start to notice it, you start to get rid of the doubt. You see, doubt's a negative vibration. On one hand, you say you want to have 10 new clients, and on the other hand, you doubt that you can. The negative vibration of your doubt will dilute the positive vibration of your desire. So people say, do I need to desire more? No, you need to doubt less. And the best way to get rid of doubt is to find proof. So become a proof seeker and start noticing everything that you're attracting. Oh, I just got an email here, that's a good one. Oh, I just did a networking meeting and somebody asked me about my, this is proof, this is proof. It's so subtle, but you have to stop thinking about what's not happening and think about what is happening. That is great. Woo -hoo. Yeah, so be more deliberate, be a deliberate attractor. Become a seeker, become a seeker of proof, because proof gets rid of doubt. You know, you and I, become, we can be doubtful, say, oh, I doubt that, and then somebody does it, what do we say? <laughs> okay, I believe it, right? As soon as you get proof, it gets rid of the doubt. So you don't have to desire more, you need to doubt less. And the way to get rid of doubt is to find proof. 
That's in all of your areas of law of attraction. So become a scorekeeper and keep score of what you are attracting. And as you're keeping score of it, meaning you're noticing it, you're talking about it, you're logging it, you're telling 10 friends, as you're doing that, now you're including the evidence. So proof and evidence remove the doubt. And doubt's a negative vibration that always dilutes manifestation. A lot of people that say, well, you know what, this makes so much sense because last year I had this big goal, but I doubted it. You had a big goal on one hand, On let's do a little math equation. On a scale of plus one to plus ten, having a really strong desire, give me a number, Jules, on a really strong desire from plus one to plus ten, what would you give me? A uh, 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 ten. That's right, you give me a 10. But now I have some doubt in my head that says, well, you can't have that, Michael. Who do you think you are? You're not good enough, blah, blah, blah. So the minus sign representing doubt, so minus 1 to minus 10, what would you give me for strong doubt? For strong doubt, at minus 10. That's right, let's do the math. Zero. So plus 10 of a desire and minus 10 of doubt equals zero. Yeah, you canceled it out. That's right. The speed at which law of attraction will manifest your desire is equal to how much negative doubt you have. So here's the question. Do I need to desire more or doubt less? <laughs> Remember, be a, be a deliberate includer. What are you including in your vibration? Are you, in, are you including proof of your attractability? Oh, Joel, here's a question for you. There's two words buried within the word attractability. What's one of them? Attract. What's the other one? Ability. So our attractability is our ability to attract. Here's another one. A uh, accountability. What's the two words buried in there? What's one of them? Account. And the other one? Ability. So accountability is our ability to account for everything we're attracting because mm. boy we have the account of we have the ability to account for when we attract that parking space don't we yeah. <laughs> oh we loved hey that's here because of me I always get parking spaces <laughs> I'm, I have a parking space angel that's why in other words when people are attracting positive things they have the ability to account for why they're attracting it but what about when the negative stuff shows up what do they say why is this happening to me? Why am I attracting this? I just well, I just can't catch a break. Yeah, it always happens to me. The universe doesn't like me. You know what? The universe doesn't know you. <laughs> the universe isn't judging you. The universe isn't favoring you. The universe is matching your vibration. Oh, the universe is testing me. No, the universe is way too busy matching you. It's not testing you. Oh, the universe knows what's good for me. No, it doesn't. It's not a judger. It's a matcher. People give way too much credit to law of attraction, thinking that law of attraction will figure it out. No, you figure it out, and you place the order. You don't go on Amazon and say, well, Amazon will figure out what I want. No, you have to tell Amazon, here's what I'm looking for. So you're taking you accountability for your thoughts and actions. That's right, and perfect, because now when the, when the crappy stuff shows up, you don't have to like it, but you have to own it. <laughs> Here's the example. You attract a parking space, and you, I want people to learn to say this. Hey, look at me. This is here because of me. And when the negative, sto shop, when the negative stuff shows up, I want you to say, hey, look at me. This is here because of me. Mm -hmm. You don't have to like it, but you need to own it. So, and the question is, what was I doing that caused me to send the vibration of this? Mm -hmm. There's no exception to the rule. I didn't create it. I'm just following it too. So when something crappy happens to me, that's my first question. What was I thinking, suing, si what was I thinking, doing, saying, observing, and giving my attention, energy, and focus to that caused me to attract that? I don't like it, but I have to own it. So, true. so that brings our, ne our next slice and dice word. The slice and dice word next is responsibility. <laughs> Jules, go ahead, please. What are the two words buried within the word responsibility? Response and, and ability. Responsibility is your ability to respond. You're always at choice. 
when it's something positive, how do we respond to it? Hey, look at me, look what I attracted, I'm so lucky, the universe loves me, the universe is looking out for me, blah, blah, blah. You also have the same ability to respond when it's negative. You see, it's not what happens <laughs> to you, it's how you respond to it. So we have to take accountability, that means our ability to account for why we attract it. We have to take responsibility, that means manage, our response, manage your, manage your ability to how you respond. And for sure, know that you are attractable, that you're able to attract on purpose. You're already attracting right now. Law of attraction is on. You don't have to turn it on, it's already on. And the universe isn't doing it to you or for you or against you. It's matching your vibrations. It's a big pill to swallow. I did a whole uh, show once on law of attraction myths, and some people got annoyed with me because you know they said, "Well, the universe is testing me." I said, "Nope, the universe is way too busy right now matching you. <laughs> the universe will figure it out. No, it's not a figure or outer. It's a matcher. You figure it out. That's why clarity is so important. You have to understand what you want. You know." Um, I'm showing a diagram here of the three-step formula. The first step says, what do you want? But most people don't know what they want, but they certainly know what they do want. You don't go to Google and type in what you don't want. Go to Google and type in no football. See what shows up. <laughs> you know what will show up? Football. Google strips the way the words don't, not, and no and brings you what you said you didn't want. Well, law of attraction is vibrational Google. Go tell Google that you don't want to attract football. I don't want to attract football. I don't like football. No football. No football. And law of attraction is eavesdropping, and it's responding to what you're giving attention to, which is football. <laughs> so step number one, what do you want? Just like Google, you need to enter what you do want. Step number two is I need to give it attention. You see, with Google, now this is a very distinction. When you type in what you want, you haven't pressed enter yet. Will Google go look for it if you just type it in? No. You have to press enter, which means, Google, give this attention. And now Google's out there searching for what you put in there. So with law of attraction, the first step is decide, here's what I want. I want an ideal client. They pay on time, they show up on time, they do their homework, they refer me, they thank me, and uh, they're, you know, and so on. That's my ideal client. But now the second piece is I need to give it attention. That means I need to include the vibration in my vibrational bubble. It's not, a lot, it's not enough to make the list. If the only thing we had to do is build a list, we'd have everything we built the list for. <laughs> Step one, build a list of what you want. Step two, you need to include that list in your vibration. Some people like to visualize. Guess what, it's not mandatory. That's another uh, myth. People say, oh, you must visualize. No, you don't. Law of Attraction doesn't care if you visualize. It cares about how you feel about it. You know, some people, when they visualize, they get frustrated because they can't see the picture. Mm. So now that they're trying to visualize, what's the vibration that they're sending, negative or positive? Negative. They're sending a negative vibration. So guess what? If, if, you, if it feels good to visualize, visualize. If it doesn't, don't. Here's another myth. You need to make a dream board. No, you don't. Imagine the people making a dream board that hate doing that. They think it's silly. <laughs> so now they're making a dream board and giving them a vibration that they don't like it. Here's the rule. If it feels good to make a dream board, then make a dream board. You understand what I'm saying here? Like, don't let anybody outside of yourself tell you how you need to include the vibration. In other words, Michael, when you see a dream board, you have to, you have to look at it and feel good about the picture that you just put up there. It's got to really excite you every time you see it. Is that correct? Yes. Well, you know, the dream. So the most important part of the dream board, Bart, sorry, the most, I'm excited now. <laughs> the most important part of the dream board process is cutting out the pictures because you're, you're not cutting out what you don't. You're really clear. You're going through the magazines. You've got your glitter gun out and you're posting stuff. And so that, because all of that will set the energy in motion. Spending two hours doing a dream board launches the energy. Mm -hmm. And you know where it fails? Yeah. 
is every time you look at it. Oh, I don't have that oh, yet. Yeah. This is never going to. So you know what? Build a dream board and put it away. Yeah. Unless it feels good every time. See, I don't want people to do something because they were told they need to do a dream board. Check with your vibrational meter. Oh, what's that? Y'all have one. Your vibrational meter will tell you whether it feels good or it doesn't feel good. Some people say, oh, you have to keep a journal. No, you don't. If it feels good, keep a journal. If it doesn't, don't. Your vibrational meter is your feelings. Your feelings are the indicator about whether that's your methodology or not. Now, in my book, I teach people how to write about it because it's based on words. You know why? Because we're always using them. Even if you're not saying it out loud, you're thinking about it. You're processing words all the time. Mm -hmm. So step number one, decide what you want with words. Step number two, give it attention with words. Build a desire statement. Now, if there was only a two-step process, you'd be done. We'd have people say, I've done that. I built a list and made a collage. I'm done. Where is it at? I'm done. I built a list and I visualized. I'm done. Well, no, you're not done because there's the third step and it's called allow it. Now, let's go back to our Google example. Step number one, I typed in what I wanted. Step number two, I pressed enter and I let Google, now Google's coming back with the answers, right? Is the first answer that Google gives me always the perfect one? No. No. But do I need to look at it to see how close I'm getting? Yeah. And we get excited. It's, oh, wow, I'm, I almost found what I'm looking for. Thank you, Google. You see how we thank Google when we're getting close? But with Law of Attraction, we don't. We say, oh, that's not what I wanted. I didn't want to have this in my life. Why am I getting this? Instead of saying, well, I'm getting pretty close. Thank you, Law of Attraction. The results that you get from your Google search are matching the input that you gave it. The results that you're getting from Law of Attraction are matching the input that you gave it. So celebrate how close the match was, like you do on Google. And here's the most important part, is when you do a request to Google, do you tell Google where to go find it? No. So don't tell Law of Attraction where it needs to come from. It's not your job. Let Law of Attraction figure it out. I see people make a list, then they go shopping. Well, what did you what did you build the list for? You didn't even you didn't even assign it to Law of Attraction. It's like going to Google and say, Google, I'm looking for one of these, and it's on this website. And Google would write back and say, Well, what do you need me for? You only use Google when you don't know where to get something, and you let Google and you you have a knowingness that Google is going to find it. You have a trust that Google's going to find it. You don't say, okay, Google, let's see if you can find this. There's a knowingness. So you need to have the same knowingness with Law of Attraction. Step one, Law of Attraction, here's what I want. Now I'm going to make sure I include the vibration by talking about it or whatever my methodology is. And now when I start to receive evidence of that's in alignment to my desire, then I say things like, wow, am I ever getting close? Thanks, Law of Attraction. It's not quite right, but you know what? It was five out of six things. I'm going to hold out. But most people don't hold out for the full match. Actually, some people marry the not full match. Oh, yeah. Or they'll take a job because it was the first one that was offered. I want everyone to hear this. Just like Google, the first thing that Google sends you back is usually not the right one, but it's pretty close. So take a look around it and notice the matches. So if you're looking for an ideal job or an ideal boyfriend or an ideal client and you go on a date, don't assume this is the one. Go on the date and find out how close you are. Pay attention. So, oh, wow, my date showed up in time. I like that. Oh, my date's handsome or beautiful. Oh, I like that. Oh, my date's into spirituality. Oh, I like that. Oh, my date might... In other words, notice the matches. Oh, my date's a smoker and has had seven glasses of wine already. <laughs> That's not a match. Well, don't marry them right? Use that as feedback and then go home and say, you know, and, but you know what most people do when they go home from a date? They call their girlfriend. Oh my God, I just had the worst date ever. He drank and drank and drank and he went out for a cigarette. She did this and she wore too much makeup and then they hang up the phone and they call the next girlfriend. Oh my God, I had the worst date ever and then they go to I had the worst date ever dot com and they put, so in other words, and they go on Facebook and they go on Twitter and they're just telling everybody about the horrible dates. 
Law of attraction is listening and responding to how you feel about. So when you get home from a horrible date, don't tell anybody. Use that as feedback to say, oh, boy, that person drank a lot. So what would I like? I'd like a person that had one glass of wine like me. That would be an ideal date. The seven things that I liked about him or her, plus just one glass of wine. And instead of saying a non-smoker, you would say, and somebody that has healthy lungs. That would be an ideal date. Thanks for the close match, Google. Thanks for the close match law of attraction. And when they say, would you like to go on another date? Be honest with yourself. Matter of fact, insist that you only do matches. I want that to be your mantra. I want people to say, I only do matches. Just like a carton of matches, I'm only doing matches. You wouldn't go to the buffet and choose something you don't like the taste of. You wouldn't build a CD for your car and put three songs that you hate. You wouldn't wear clothes that didn't feel good, except shoes. You understand? Only do matches. And, and, and it, if you have to say that to them, say that. Say, you know what, I don't think we were a match. You're not insulting him or her or yourself. You're not putting the blame on anybody. Said, I don't think we're a match. They already know that. Mm -hmm. Their vibrational meter was going e e e e, but most people aren't honest with themselves. This is what I call a vibrational boundary. You need to have vi a boundary about what you'll allow in your vibrations. And vibrational boundaries take courage. It takes courage to set a boundary and it takes courage to maintain it and to articulate it. And you might lose a few friends, but your only job is to protect and mind your vibration. Because when you have a high vibration, things come to you fast. Mm -hmm. So protect it and look after it. Matter of fact, your only job is to be selfish. Selfish meaning self-care. Care about yourself that you'll only include things in your vibrational bubble that make you feel good. Mm -hmm. That means not eating food that you don't like the taste of. That means not watching TV or listening to songs you don't like the sound of. That means not hanging out with friends that don't make you feel good. That means not having a job. It takes a lot of work initially, but boy, once you line up your energy only to include the things that feel good, then you'll be including more that feel good. And then you'll be on the vibrational roll where everything you attract is feeling good because you set the boundary you declared it and you maintained it. Right. So be selfish enough only to include the things that make you feel good. Wow. That is wonderful. <sighs> okay, I, I need to ask you, I need to ask you about affirmations because for all these years, I've been doing the wrong affirmations. I didn't yeah. know that until I read your book. Yes, well, uh, even even Brian Tracy has acknowledged me many times for my explanation about affirmations. Thanks for bringing it up. So, for all you affirmation people, hashtag not so sorry. Okay, <laughs> it's a billion dollar industry. Affirmations are a billion dollar industry, and I'm going to explain why affirmations don't work for most people. If they're working for you, relax. But for most people, they're not. So, Jewel, let's let's describe what makes up an affirmation. You know, what are some guidelines? The first one is it needs to be positive. What else? Uh, it needs to. Uh, it needs to state your intention. That's right, as if you have them. Yeah. So it's your intention in the current tense, positive and short and sweet. Now, I'm a big guy. I'm like Drew Carey. Right? right. I remember years ago I had an affirmation on my bathroom mirror. Now, first, I want you to hear the question carefully. In the affirmation world, would this be considered a positive affirmation? I have a happy, slender body. Is that a positive affirmation? Yes. <laughs> you bet it is. It's short, it's sweet, it's in the current tense, and it's about me. Now, Joel, this is not pretty, but imagine me standing in front of my bathroom mirror and I can't even see my feet. I'm so fat, this was years ago, I'm still big now, but years ago, and I'm reading my affirmation. I have a happy, slender body. I'm not even saying it out loud, but as I'm thinking that thought, you know what it converts to? Well, no you don't. Look how big you are. You're so big you can't even see your feet. 
you're as big as your father. You're bigger than you were last year. And all of a sudden, I'm starting the negative spiral where one negative thought found another one, found another one. And now I'm so depressed, I'm running out to the fridge to put Dream Whip on an onion. Okay? <laughs> so the, the challenge here is that the positive affirmation was not congruent with the feelings. And congruent meaning equal to. So even though the positive affirmation on the wall says, I have a happy, slender body, it wasn't a positive vibration. I want everyone to hear this. In many cases, your positive affirmation is sending a negative vibration. Now, I go to my friend's house. He's got little plaques all over his house. Money overflows to me, or money comes to me easily. My bank account's overflowing. I'm an abundant money receiver. Now, my friend has zero money, right? So I said, dude, what is up with that? You know what he says to me? Oh, I can't even read them. They just depress me. <laughs> Can you hear the irony in that? These positive affirmations are, and we use affirmations thinking it's helping us include what we want, but it's not helping us include what we want. It's actually causing us to include the opposite of the vibration. Because our brains say, well, you know what? No, you don't have a happy, slender body. No, you don't have 10 ideal clients. No, you don't have lots of money in the bank. When you declare something that isn't true, your brain's smarter and say, well, no, I don't. Mm. I remember in the early 1990s, that's probably when I started my personal development journey, I had learned about affirmations. So I bought, you know, I bought a box of affirmations cards. And I thought my vibrational meter reader was broke. I remember the first one that I picked up, it said, all my family relationships are harmonious. It going, ee, ee, and my, my meter was going, ee, no, they're not, no, they're not. I said, I'll say it again. You know what? You can say it a thousand times, and it didn't make me feel better. I love my neighbors. Ee, ee, ee. I love my job. Ee. And they were all like negative vibrations. So don't tell me, so don't tell me that I can say those things and make them happen. A positive affirmation, in many cases, sends a negative vibration. So, of course, you're going to want to know how to correct that. So, you know, I'm known as the how-to guy for helping people implement Law of Attraction. And I have merged Law of Attraction with NLP, that's Neuro Linguistic Programming. It's all through my book. The worksheets, the forms, what to do, what to say, how to do this, how to say that. So here is the new affirmation for you, if you're listening and you use affirmations. And I'll, I'll, I'll explain it after I give it to it. Here's the affirmation. I am in the process of attracting my ideal blank. I'm in the process of attracting my ideal body. I'm in the process of attracting my ideal boyfriend or girlfriend. I'm in the process of attracting my ideal interview. And you know what the affirmation police are saying right now? Never say that you're in the process. Always say it as if you have it. Right. If somebody says that to you, you know what you can tell them? Go mind your own vibrations. <laughs> Go mind your own vibration. We just learned if you state it as if you have it and you don't, that positive affirmation doesn't stay with you because it's converted to what you don't believe in. And people say, well, won't I always be in the process? You will. You'll always be in the process. Because when you get what you say you want, you're going to want something bigger, better, and more. Oh, I'm in the process of attracting a new client. And then you get a new client, then what? Oh, I'd like some more. So you see how just when you thought you'd finish it, you don't finish it. Yeah. So you're always, so embrace that. I'm in the process. But here is the NLP, Neuro Linguistic Program, reason why this sentence works. Do you remember earlier I said whatever I include in my bubble? If I said this right now, I'm in the process of attracting an, uh, I'm, a, I'm in the process of attracting my next speaking engagement. Oh, what did I just give attention to? Oh, my next speaking engagement. Did I say that I had one? What if I said, I have an ideal speaking engagement coming up? I said, well, no, you don't. No. What if I said, I'm in the process of attracting my next died and little voice says, well, you are in the process of attracting it. Why? Because I just gave it attention. So when you say, I'm in the process of attracting my next ideal interview, you just set the information, you just set the uh, vibration about that. It's a very, very well-crafted sentence. I'm in the process of attracting my ideal. Just by saying it causes you to give it attention, energy, and focus. And when you give it attention, energy, and focus, you just complete it step two. 
You just gave attention, energy, and focus to your desire just by your thoughts and your words. Brilliant. It makes so much sense. And yes. that's what we've been doing wrong. Yes, it makes sense. Now, it, you know, like I said, there's a couple things we talked about today that are going to be, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, uh, when we have to change our mind radically. Um, we have to change our beliefs on what we were doing in the past. Yeah, uh, it's like, oh, you mean I shouldn't be goal setting with dates and numbers? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, I shouldn't be using that for, yeah, but it's a billion dollar industry. Well, don't listen to that. Listen to how it feels. Listen to your inner voice that says, uh, no, that's not true. You don't have a happy, slender body. No, your bank account isn't overflowing. But start to say, I'm in the process of attracting, you can even say, I'm in the process of attracting everything that I need to do, know, or have to attract and allow my ideal client base or my ideal seminar or my ideal job or my ideal interview or my ideal family relationships, whatever it is. That word helps you set the energy in motion and that's the second part of the process. Brilliant. Love it, love it, love it. Thank you. Uh that, this is good stuff. Keep going, keep going. We've got we've got about another uh, I don't know eight minutes. Oh, eight minutes. Yeah. I can do some hot in eight minutes. Okay. First, good. Everybody wants to attract money, but like the word money, when people talk about money, what's their vibration usually, positive or negative? Negative because it's lack. That's right. It's lack. It's too hard to get. It causes problems. Someone, whatever people's beliefs are. So as you're talking about money, you're not including the vibration of money in your vibration. You're including the negative vibration. Matter of fact, if we had a vibrational meter reader and got people to talk about money, and I pointed to the vibrational meter reader, here's what it would. Here's what it would register. E e e e. So remove money from the equation. If you want to become more abundant, you need to send the vibration of abundance. And here's the reason why. Because abundance is a feeling. It's not a thing, it's a feeling. Wow, do I ever feel abundant? You can't pick up abundant. It's not a thing, it's a feeling. And remember earlier we talked about you need to include the vibration of what you want to attract it. So now I'm showing another diagram and it says abundance is a feeling. So we need to be including the vibration of abundance within our vibrational bubble. Okay. So now when Law of Attraction is checking, it caught us including the vibration of abundance. And remember earlier, it's a hack. Law of Attraction doesn't know how it got in your bubble. It's just going to respond to it. So after this interview, well during the interview and before it and after it, I'm going to say, well, am I ever abundant? Jewel just gave me a 15-minute interview where I got to talk about and she told people about my book. That was so abundant. I love when that happens. And now I'm just kind of rambling on about how abundant I am. And Law of Attraction is eavesdropping on this abundant interview and now it unfolds and orchestrates to bring me more. Now I remember the time that uh, my friend last week brought me to lunch. Not only did he bring me for lunch, he drove me there. So I had free transportation. I got a free ride to lunch and then he bought me lunch and then he gave me some advice. And let's add that up. A drive to the restaurant, $10. Lunch was $25. And his free advice was $100. That was $130 or $40 lunch I had. And it cost me nothing. Am I ever abundant? And now my job is to talk about it. And the more I talk about it and remember it, the more it gets included. I, here's the sentence. The only way to become more abundant is to send the vibration of abundance. So now your new homework for 2018 is to become a proof seeker and start seeking your own proof of abundantness because a lot of you are already abundant but you're not acknowledging it or paying attention to it. Maybe you got 20% off at the grocery store, that's abundant. Maybe you bought something on sale, that's abundant. Maybe you bought a free flight with your tickets, maybe that's abundant. Maybe you... Uh, Maybe somebody gave you money, or maybe you found money. Like there's many reasons how you could become more abundant. So start seeking those things out. Start acknowledging your abundantness. And as you're acknowledging your abundantness, you're including the vibration of abundance. And abundance is a feeling. And law of attraction matches feelings. It matches abundantness. 
So become more abundant by celebrating your abundantness. What about Celebr what about the, pro go ahead. what about prosperity consciousness where you give out money? Oh, Joel, you are challenging me today because it's a it's another myth. Okay. So here for an example, you know, <coughs> I I grew up in a Catholic church. And I would see families in the church that didn't have any money, right? They just didn't have any money. They were a poor family. And I, you know, and when it came time to give money to the church, it's not what you give that law of attraction is responding to. It's how you feel about what you give. So if you're tithing 10% and you can't afford it, and it's making you stressful and anxiety, that is the vibration that you're sending. If you've got lots of money and you can give it away and it feels good, it's not the tithing exercise, it's how you feel yeah. about tithing. It's how you feel about giving it away. I don't like to give money away, but I like to give service away. Because mm. I feel that's more abundant for me. People say, my friends say, can you lend me some money? No, nope, I can't lend you money. I can tell you how to attract some though. I can tell you how to become, and some of them say, no, I don't want to know that. I just want your money. No, nope, I don't give money. <laughs> <laughs> That's wise. I get it. Yeah. I get it. So what you're saying, it's how you feel. If you feel abundant enough to give money, then you're going to get that back. But if you don't, if you're feeling the lack, don't give the money. Give the service. That That's is right. a I'll, good, good place I'll to be. Do it if it feels right, you know. And service has a much bigger value than money can in many cases, you know. Oh, the other thing about money is really interesting because when my friend... You know, I didn't know he was going to buy me lunch, but he did. Always say yes to money. Do you know how many times I offer to buy something to someone? No, 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 that's okay. No, no, I'm, I'd like to buy lunch for you. No, no, that's okay. You don't have to do that. So from now on, just say thank you. Yeah. And that is a huge stress for a lot of people. But that will help you get out of your scarcity consciousness and help you move, move you to this abundantness consciousness. And my friend said, I'd like to buy you lunch. And you know what I said? Well, thank you. You can do that. Now, the first time I did it years ago, I just felt that little discount. Oh, let me buy, let me buy you something on the way home. Like you want to repay it? It's like no. Just, just be bold enough to say, well, thank you, and just take the gift. And again, at first, there'll be just some discomfort, and eventually, you'll feel good about accepting the gift. And that's that's your own abundantness when you can receive stuff without having to replenish it. Powerful, powerful. Ooh, goodness gracious. Give us one more tip. Come on, one more. Just one more. Oh, my goodness. Okay. I love this. You're going to have to come on again and again and again. I've got so much. So, yeah, this is about money. So I always say yes to money. Oh, here's about goal setting. Oh, yeah. Uh, a lot of people are focused on the getting to the goal. I'd like to imagine a timeline. You're looking at January, February, March 31st. You say you want to make that many clients by March 31st. Go beyond March 31st and pay attention to what you'd get when you get that goal. And now including, well, you know, when I get 10 clients, I'm going to reward myself with a new, I don't know, a new car or a new CD or a new go for dinner. So give attention to what you'd, what, you'd, what you'd honor yourself with that. Instead of keeping score that you're not there yet, put in your bubble what you do when you get there. Remove money from the equation. Mm -hmm. Everyone's giving attention to the money. Well, sometimes it doesn't take money. Imagine if I said, oh, i got to get some money before I go for lunch. I don't have any money in my pocket. i got to get money. And I gave all the attention to money, and I get there, and I didn't need money. <laughs> There's a lot of ways you can have what you want. It can be gifted. You can find it. You can win it. You can get one for free. Someone can lend it to you. But we say, oh, I need enough money to get the red coat. Well, you know what? Skip the money and give attention to the red coat. Let law of attraction figure out how the coat's going to arrive. When you say the only way to get it is to buy it, you've closed down all the other avenues. Yes. Wow. Let law of attraction figure out how to get you what you want and remove money from the equation. Mm, brilliant. 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 Thank you. Okay. So, oh gosh, this is a great show. Uh, Michael, you've got events coming up. You've got a book coming out. You're going to be on the cover. You've got a great 2018 article in there. 
I do. So, but talk about your events. Well, every Friday I do hang out with Michael. It's a live show I've been doing for 221 Fridays. It's Facebook Live, and it's all about Law of Attraction, NLP, which is my middle book, and my third book, Your Life's Purpose. We talk about that subject. So you can join me every Friday live. And my Facebook is Michael Loche Fans. But my big news for 2018 is I'm live in Las Vegas. I'm checking the date, May 16 and 17. And I have certified 460 Law of Attraction facilitators. That means they're using the material from my book, all the processes and all the worksheets. I teach them how to do an introductory presentation for free where they really give away a lot of stuff and then people say, you know what, I want more. So I teach uh, Law of Attraction enthusiasts, Law of Attraction coaches, existing trainers and companies how to teach Law of Attraction, the how-to steps in teaching Law of Attraction and I provide all the coaching, all the worksheets. Uh, it's like a turnkey business. You want to start making money teaching Law of Attraction? I can help you with that. I've done it for 447 people in 17 countries. People are making money right now teaching the systems and the processes for Law of Attraction. It's not enough just to talk about Law of Attraction. People want the how-tos. What do I do? What do I say? And what is the system? And that's what I can help them with. And I like the fact that they can start making money immediately after that. I mean, you're not talking a month or two or three or four. You're talking like a week or two they start making money from what you're teaching them because you're telling them how exactly to do it. That's right. People will leave Las Vegas, it's two days, 16 and May 16 and 17. They will leave that seminar having practiced the script to give an introductory presentation that's using accelerated learning techniques where you get 100% of the audience participating. And at the end of that free, razzle dazzle, high content, high participant presentation, you upsell to, we could just say, like a $99 full day workshop, just that it's a good starting place. And the likelihood of somebody at that presentation signing up is high. So the model is that you do that introductory presentation over and over and over, and it becomes your signature presentation. It's just something that you become famous for. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. I can help you with that. So. That is exciting. Um, and also, can you talk a little bit about something I've experienced with you called Emotion Code? The Emotion Code, yes, it's my other favorite thing to do. Mm -hmm. The Emotion Code is a way to identify unprocessed negative emotions. You know how sometimes people say that they, um, they carry stress in their back? Yeah. Oh, I've got stress in my lower back. Well, there's more than stress. There's actually 60 possible negative emotions. And those negative emotions are causing chronic pain, and soreness and swelling and inflammation. They're the size of a baseball. They're also causing you money blocks. They're also causing you relationship blocks. They're also causing you business blocks. Mm -hmm. They're causing you earaches and headaches and neck pain and tingling in the feet and restless legs. Anything, any kind of pain in your body is caused by these unprocessed negative trapped emotions from previous events. And what I do as a practitioner, I use muscle testing to identify what the trapped emotion is and then I remove it with a magnet and it's done at a distance. Now you and I had a session but we were at a distance, we were at the restaurant, you were sitting across from me. But I work with people all over the world on Skype and over the telephone removing these trapped emotions that are causing them to have pain and money blocks and relationship blocks and all kinds of great stuff. And you can, it releases immediately. Yeah, right away, like that's what happened with you, right, yeah. right over. It's like, what? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, we did it in the restaurant, and then we did it over Skype. Yep. Good times. It really, really does work. You will actually um, do it and meet or have people meet you with Skype, and you'll do this for them. That's right. And on Saturdays, every like Friday I do my Law of Attraction show, on Saturday on the same Facebook page, Michael Loge Fans, my friend John and I, he's another practitioner, we've had 27 episodes and every week we are healing somebody's pain wow. live on Facebook without them being on the show, wow. just from wow. chatting. We've helped people with constipation, we've helped people with heartburn, headaches, chronic pain, money blocks, um, seasonal allergies, within minutes, food, 
getting rid of food, getting rid of drinks, getting rid of habits. So uh, check out it's uh, the web address is hangoutwithmichael.com forward slash bros as in brothers b r o s, and you can go back and you can see live uh, John and I doing it live, removing these trapped emotions from people. It's very exciting. Very exciting, and it really works. So, and they can go to hanging out with Michael uh, on the. Facebook page. Hang out with Michael. Yeah, hangoutwithmichael.com. Hangoutwithmichael.com. So I'm going to have a list of those on my show page so that people can go directly there. Um, and that's going to make all the difference. Michael, we are all out of time. I thoroughly enjoyed this. I Thank want you. to remind everybody of your Las Vegas event on May 16th and 17th. And um, you're going to be posting that and getting that out for everyone. So uh, stay tuned with Michael. All right. And I'm looking forward to seeing the cover of the new Law of Attraction magazine for January. I'm excited about that. <laughs> and uh, even all the tips I gave today, there's five tips in the magazine we didn't even talk about. So if you love today, you're going to love the Law of Attraction magazine, January 18th edition. Yeah, yeah, January 2018 edition. Uh, yep, he's on the cover. You can't miss it. You can't miss it. It's a good one. Thank, thank you, Michael. It's been wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll be back next week with another great show from Law of Attraction Talk Radio. If you'd like to comment on tonight's show, send an email to jules at loaradionetwork.com and have a great week.